The press release, the future of software should be memory safe straight from the White House. Okay. Hot tub category win? Not today. All right. Leaders in industry support White House call to address root cause of many of the worst cyber attacks. Washington, today, the White House Office of the National Cyber Director, once uh, released a report calling on the technical community to proactively reduce the attack service in cyberspace. Once makes the case that technology manufacturers can prevent an entire class of vulnerabilities from entering the digital ecosystem by adopting memory safe programming languages. Once is also encouraging the research community to address the problem of software measurability to enable the development of better diagnostics that measure cyber se- security quality i'm pretty sure we just got we just did we just get rust is this a haskell endorsement or a rust endorsement which one which one i can't tell is this haskell or rust uh, rip c c is definitely out the window 100 percent rust this is 100 percent rust is zig's pretty safe though yeah okay i think ocaml falls largely un- under the safety side of things elixir javascript it's definitely javascript it's actually javascript that's the most memory safe i would i mean is, is this like an anti-C article, C slash C++ article? Like, real talk. Like, when you really think about it, JavaScript is inherently safer than C. Because you can't really... It's very difficult to do, like, a memory attack in C or in, in JavaScript. I'm not even sure if it's possible. I'm sure there's something I haven't thought of. I'm sure there's something that can be done that's wild, but, like... We don't see it. You can? Yeah, I mean, I know you can do, like, regex expansion attacks, and you can do some, like, two large buffers to make the the thing crash, but that's not necessarily... Memory attack in JS is called Chrome. I just had a Chrome notification, by the way. By the way, I use, I, I use Chrome, by the way, just so you guys know, and just in case you're wondering, that was, that was me on Windows. Okay. The report is titled Back to the Building Blocks, A Path Towards Secure and Measurable Software. I'm more curious about the second one, honestly. Like... Is it surprising that we should write more of our critical infrastructure in a language like Rust? Probably not. Like, you know, I can understand why operating systems want to gravitate towards a language like Rust, right? I think Zig is a more fun and more interesting language that I think is better in almost in a lot of different ways. But it also isn't as safe as Rust, despite the fact you can technically do a buffer overflow in Rust. That one that one super cool repo shows how you can do it. Uh so I like I get this why this should exist, but like all software, I have a hard time believing that all software should be. And then second, how do you make measurable, right? Like if technically, if you knew how to measure it, would you know all the problems? Well, then how do you measure it, right? Like how would you measure something? That's what I'm struggling with because uh, fuzzers, yeah, but you're still measuring. It. Like yeah, it could pass this level of stuff. I'm mind blown right now. Yeah, I mean that's the, that's what's kind of difficult for me is that I'm trying to figure out a tape measure, maybe a tape measure, but like real talk, like how do you measure the software quality? Well, you can say it passes this level of fuzzers. Sure. But is that, I mean, do we really need a research community to come out with that? Two inches is enough. I know I keep hearing that. Uh, we, as a nation, have the ability and the responsibility to reduce the attack surface in cyberspace and prevent an entire class of security bugs from entering the digital ecosystem. But that means we need to tackle the hard problem of moving to memory-safe programming languages. What are other languages? I, I want to know what he means by this, right? Said the National Cybersecurity Harry Coker. Uh, Thanks to the work of our once team and some tremendous collaboration from technical community and our public and private sector partners, the report released today outlines the threat and opportunity available to us as we move forward or as we move toward the future where software is memory safe and secure by design. Uh, the NSA mentioned Java and C Sharp in a similar memo a few months back. Okay, so it, so it sounds like this is largely a move away from something like C++, I think is what how, how we should probably read this, is that this is don't use languages that are inherently easy to oopsie-daisy things. Oh, they do mention? Okay, they will mention it later on. I'm also pleased that we are working with and calling on the academic community to help us solve another hard problem. How do we develop better diagnostics to measure cybersecurity quality? Addressing these challenges is imperative to ensuring that we can secure our digital ecosystem long term and protect the security of our nation. I like I, I actually really am on the team that as a nation and as like a government producing software, you should pro like I'm not a Okay, I have two problems. Two problems. One, the first thing is that I think as a nation, it'd be good to have the most secure form of software. So can I can I buy that they should just write it in Rust and prevent a whole slew of attacks? You know, I'm 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 on that team. 
But I also was alive when Obamacare website was launched, and it was single handedly just like just like the 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 worst website in the universe. So do I have any confidence that the government can solve this problem? I don't know. Like real talk, it was a disaster. Like disaster is kind of an understatement. Mr. B- Mr. Bobby Tables over here telling us all about it. Like real talk, it was skill issues. Uh, and so 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 when you put those two thoughts together, you must you must remember like do we want the government attempting to write software in Rust? Like, how many billions of dollars is it going to cost for them to make anything? Just real talk. Like, how many billions of dollars are we talking about just to write anything? At least seven bill. It's a good point. It's a good point. It's it, that That's my worry, is that the, the ineptitude mixed with a language that by its very purpose is extremely difficult to be proficient in. Like, you mix those two things together. I, I'm worried. We got like a billion dollars for a Hello World project. Like, that's research. That's research R&D all the way. Uh, saying the gov made it will make it worse. I know, just by the very nature, R&D tax write-off. By adopting an engineering forward approach to policymaking, Wunst is ensuring that technical community's expertise is reflected in how the federal government approaches these problems. Creators of software and hardware can have an outsized impact on the nation's shared security by factoring cybersecurity outcomes into the manu- manufacturing process. Okay. Okay. Some of the most infamous cyber. Let's see. Some of the most infamous cyber events in history: the Morris Worm. Mother, that mother worm, the slammer worm. By the way, I got hit hard by the slammer worm. I'm not gonna lie to you, the slammer worm. I got, I got taken to pound town by the slammer worm. Can we all, can we all pour one out for the slammer worm? Uh, the heart bleed vulnerability in 2014, the Trident exploit of 2016, the Blast Pass exploit of 2023 were headlines grabbing cyber attacks that caused real world damage to the systems that societies rely on every day. These worms, I know. Real talk. Underlying all of them is a common root cause. C++. Can we just be real here? Can we just say C? Do we have to say memory safety vulnerabilities? Can we just, can we stop dancing around it and just call, can we call a spade a spade? Why does this once person sound like they're from Whoville? (laughs) For 35 years, memory safety vulnerabilities have plagued the digital ecosystem. You call me whatever you like. Okay, baby. But it doesn't have to be this way, says Ajana Rajan, Assistant National Cyber uh, Director for Technology Security. Damn, that is like, think about that. That's the ANCDTS. I mean, that's a name. That's a name right there. Uh, This report was created for engineers by engineers because we know they can make the architecture and design decisions about the building blocks they consume. I don't know if you guys ever heard this, but I think it was called the Rule of Six. Is it called the Rule of Six Obamacare website? Right? There's this... um, Dang it, there's a, there's a podcast somewhere. I know I could find it. I could find it again. But it's called The Rule of Six, where the person who helped fix the website said that on average, he had to go down six levels to find out anyone who knew what was actually going on. I, I, I can find it, and I'll try to link it. But it's like it's very, very funny. That's like for anything to actually work required huge amount of levels. So when I hear something like, this is a report by engineers for engineers, you know what I really hear? What I hear is that there's first six levels of people that like did it, and then, and then there was the engineer, right? Once has engaged with a diverse group of stakeholders, rallying them to join the administration's efforts. Statements from uh, of support from leaders across academia, civil society, and industry can be found here. I would, no one asked me, okay? I feel, am I not civil? Am I not, am I not civil enough for you? Uh, in line with two major themes uh, of the president's national c- cybersecurity strategy released nearly one year ago, the report released today takes an important step towards shifting the responsibility of cybersecurity away from individuals and small businesses and onto larger organizations like technology companies and the federal government that are more capable of managing than ev- the ever-evolving threat. Oh, that's interesting. So do you think that there's like, are they saying that there's going to be laws or agencies to enforce this type of stuff being passed down? Like, are, it, it, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Does that mean this is real? Is the Rust Evangelism Strike Force actually a real thing? I think it, it always has. It always has been. I think, I think we now have government-endorsed Rust Evangelism Strike Force. Hide your kids. Hide your wives. Husband, husband. 
the rust and everything around here. Uh, this work also aligns <laughs> with uh, and builds upon secure by design uh, programs and research and development efforts from across the federal government, including those led by CISA, NSA, FBI, and NIST. I don't understand these last two. More of them. Uh, the work on memory safety in the report complements interest from Congress on this topic. Great. You know who I think about when I think of experts leading the field of cybersecurity? You know who I think about? I think about Congress. You know, like Nancy Pelosi, classically known for her expertise specifically in cybersecurity. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Like, that's that's what I think of. That's 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 what I think of. You know, uh, this includes the efforts of the United States Senate and House Appropriations Committees, who included director report a language requiring a briefing from once on this issue in fiscal year 2023 appropriations legislation. I don't even know what that sentence meant. Additionally, U.S. Senate Homeland Security and Government Affairs Committee Chairman Gary Peters and U.S. Senator Ron Wyden uh, have highlighted their legislation efforts on memory safety to once. Really? Okay, what is okay, real talk Ron Wyden. Uh Senator Ron Wyden. Who is he? What 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 has he done? Like uh is an American politician serving in the let's see from Oregon. Great, Oregon. Okay. Okay. Uh member of the let's let's see let's see what he's done. He went there. He's a senator um uh, education school of law. Okay. So definitely knows a lot about cybersecurity. He went to law school age 74 years old. Classic Modern politician making all like I mean this is this is actually a really true problem just in our system in general, is that I don't think this guy understands this, and the thing is is I don't think that this guy, given experts around him, could accurately convey what he needs to convey to make these decisions, and so like to me that's like that's really like like this all sounds great. You know what? I'm totally on board. Let's make things memory safe, especially for the government. Like the government, if the government gets hacked, it's really it's actually like genuinely a bad experience for everybody. Nobody wins on a government hacking except for the people doing hacking. But I don't think this is this is this ain't the group. You know what I mean? This ain't the group. I'm not even qualified to go do it. Okay? I think we need to get live overflow and low-level learning. They got to go do it, okay? We got to get John Hammond on this, okay? John Hammond needs to go and do that. And then Trash Dev just to see what happens, right? I think we should get Trash Dev in there just to, just to mix it all up, right? You're going to have, like, expert, expert, expert Trash Dev, right? Like, you just, just throw it all together just to see what would happen. Yeah, we need smelly nerds. We need the smelly nerds. And so, you know, like, when I see these things, I... Like, I'm totally in support of everything that's being said here. I think every nobody would disagree with any of these things being said. It's more of, I don't think the people making these decisions are capable, even with experts around them, of making the correct decision. If we send Thor, we won't get any more shorts. So, like, do you want to send Thor or do you want shorts? So I think, I think, you, got, I think you got to make that decision. And personally, I think we should keep the shorts game going. And not send Thor to go do that. That's 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 pers That's my personal. That's a personal preference here. Okay, send Thanos. Yeah, send Thanos. I just want jorts. Yeah. Um. I know you just want jorts. Um. By the way, I just it's so uh Dorak uh Dahorak Dahorak. I want to let you know something. I uh, was walking through my house and my wife had a box unpacked that had like a piece of metal sticking out of it, and I ripped my jeans as I walked by it. I now have a pair of jorts. When I ripped my jeans, I said, F it. F it. I'm wearing jorts, boys. And so now I have an amazing pair of jorts sitting and waiting for summer to happen. Wear it live? Absolutely. How short are we talking? You know, I, I do the appropriate amount of jorting, which these aren't the jorts, but I prefer them like, you know, a good few inches above the knee, right? You want, you want, you want some, you want, I, I like to call it uh, low. Do the pockets hang out? No, the pockets do not hang out. But I like... I like low man thigh exposure, okay? I think high man thigh exposure is generally a crime against humanity, okay? Tasteful exposure. I, I'm, I'm a modest man. I'm a modest man, and I have very normal, very normal opinions, which is that the uh, inner deep man thigh is the ugliest part on any body, okay? I do not, I do not believe anybody thinks that, that that spot's good, okay? It's like sparsely hairy. It's, it's, it, it, it's often entirely too white, it's just like everything about it. It's just it's not. It's just it's just disgusting. Okay. Ugh. 
Ugh. Girls like it? I don't believe that at all. I, in fact, it makes me think you've never even talked to a female when you say this. All right, that's what I think. Okay, that's a that's what I think. Okay, uh, testicle tanning incoming. Okay, well now that we've gotten onto this conversation and it's absolutely the most ridiculous conversation. Hey, the name is the Jortsogen.